Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade, and we have a great show for you today. There's a big shakeup in the NBA sneaker world, Pusha T versus Drake sneakers, the week's hottest releases, and of course we have this week's Hard Pass. All right, let's start with some hot takes. Now, I'm not sure when this live stream of Phoenix Suns players on a plane took place, but there has never been a clearer example of the generational divide between old man Chris and, well, everybody else on that team. Oh, y'all know we got bottles of it. We going crazy, man. Like, we going crazy. Like, oh, man. It's like a litmus test to see how old you are. Like for me, I give Chris props for being the adult in the room and calling out Devin Booker and his supposed drink. Now, if I was younger, I would be upset at Chris for snitching on Book, but which side do you fall on? After a surprising playoff run last year, it's been a disappointing 21-22 season for both the New York Knicks and Atlanta Hawks. But leave it to Trey Young to give us some flashbacks when he once again torched the Knicks and told some fans to hold this L. By the way, that Knicks fans with the lame comeback at the end, what are you, a, a bully from the 80s? Who talks like that? Uh, LeBron James is out here giving us a reason to still care about my 17-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers, man. Moving up the scoring ranks and rocking kicks we've forgotten, like the Nike LeBron 25-5 when he came back home to take on the Cavs, says a lot that he'd rather wear a sneaker that's 15 years old instead of his newest signature shoe that you can actually buy in stores, but whatever. Keep scoring, Bron. Help us forget this dumpster fire of a season. By the way, uh, a quick card pass as a Laker fan to Kevin Love for this extended headlock on LeBron after his soul was snatched on by a dunk LeBron did earlier in the game. I know they were playing around, but I did have a half second thought that someone needs to whack Love with a steel chair across the back. But also, this is how you know Love is in the inner circle because who do you know who can put LeBron in the headlock that would make Kurt Angle proud and have him apologizing profusely after the game? Once I got the bounce pass and I put my left leg down into the ground, that's when I looked up. And to be completely honest, I, I, I hate to have to be him. He's my guy, that's my brother. And I um, hope I'm still invited to the wedding, that's all. Like, I bet you Chris Paul has tried to get LeBron in the headlock at least once, and now the mental image of LeBron shooing Chris away like a fly? It's pretty hilarious to me. Uh, shout out to Savvy Creators for this handy diagram on how to make your own Balenciaga sneakers. Meanwhile, someone at Balenciaga is probably screaming, oh no, they're on to us. Let's use raggedy old Air Max shoes like Tailwinds next time and hope that really nobody notices. And since we're on the creative tip or the critique of lack of creativity, depending on how you look at it, I guess, here's artist Canyon with their latest piece, Plastic bag glued to M2K Techno soles and you can put water in them because why not? Now, that's art. You know what's not art or cool or creative? Putting your sneakers in a microwave, but more on that a little later in the show. Uh, the Simpsons parodied Supreme on a recent episode. Guess one of the writers discovered sneaker culture a few months ago. Congrats. Remember when the Simpsons were ahead of the curve? They actually predicted sneaker culture all the way back in season two when Homer wanted Ned Flanders' assassin trainers, and now they're doing an animated version of a season one hard pass bit. Ah, well. At least the good episodes are on Disney+, Plus, and you can go back and watch old episodes of Hard Pass here anytime. Uh, there's a deleted scene out now from the Batman that gives more context to a scene that I felt was wildly out of place in the movie. It's five minutes long, it's gripping, it's compelling, and it feels like something that should have never been cut in the first place. Yeah, yes, look, it's adding another five minutes to a movie that's already three hours long, but it complements the finale so well, man. Either keep both scenes or cut them. That's how I would have done it. Or just give us 10 more minutes of Zoe Kravitz doing Catwoman stuff. And uh, you know, have her run into Holly Berry and tell her she's got this. I don't, I don't know. Uh, Squid Games and their all white vans are going to get a second season, but it probably won't be for a while because, well, I won't spoil what happens at the end of season one, but there are better story angles they can take besides the obvious. Nailing that in whatever childhood games they have to twist into death traps is going to be key, but the series creator also teased that Say Biok might have a long lost twin, further cementing this series as anime as all hell. Next thing you know, gi red hair actually means he's achieved Super Saiyan 4 and Frontman is actually Aaron from Attack on Titan in the midst of a heel turn that doesn't make any sense at all. 
And uh, speaking of Attack on Titan, the end of season four, part two is scheduled to drop on April 3rd. And there's a lot of speculation if it's really the end of the story or if it will just be a setup for a movie finale. Look, I haven't watched since the end of season four, part one, but all I'm gonna say is if the show doesn't end with Levi going medieval on Zeke's punk ass, I swear I'm going to send out a mildly upset tweet. Oh, and f them kids. Y'all know which kids I'm talking about. So can we talk about this rivalry that's currently dead, but I'm dragging out of the closet for a hard pass segment for a second here? You know, Pusha T, how he started trending when Arby's debuted in, uh, I guess it's a diss track against McDonald's filet fish sandwich. Now, for context, so fish sandwiches, they're popular this time of year because of the Lenten season. I'm, I'm not going to get into the machinations of all that, but just know that plenty of Christians and Catholics swear off meat during this time, and thus, fish sandwiches, they're popping right now. Anyways, as you might expect from a Pusha T diss track, it was well produced, had a bunch of quotable lines, and a Coke reference. Spoiler, it's not about Coca-Cola. But, as with all things King Push, there's a deeper meaning to his participation in the track. See, Push claims that along with his brother, then Clip's partner Malice, they were the creators of the jingle for the long-running McDonald's I'm Loving It ad campaign. You, you know the one, I'd hum it, but I don't want to pay anybody royalties, especially since the Clips ain't getting a dime from it. There are people who dispute how much credit Push gets for the jingle, but Push says he and Malice, who now goes by no Malice, got paid a one-time fee of anywhere between half a million or a million dollars for the jingle, and that was it. I'm loving it lasted longer than the freaking clips, man. I swear, I just heard it on a podcast ad last week. And Push doesn't get a percentage of that. Yikes. Like, I understand people new to the game sign bad deals all the time. Scotty Pippen makes sure we never forget people sign bad deals all the time. That's the nature of the business. It's scummy and it's unfair, but that's the way the world works, um, well, most of the time. And if Push's story is true, McDonald's not sending a check to Push after all of this time is the equivalent of Nike never taking care of Carolyn Davidson, the graphic designer who created the swoosh and charged Phil Knight 35 bucks in 1971. So what does this have to do with Drake? Well, in a Rolling Stone story about Push's work with Arby's, he says that he's over the 2018 feud when they were dropping diss tracks against each other on a seemingly daily basis. Pusha took the beef to the next level when he released the track that revealed Drake's, uh, I'm going to say parental status. Kind of hard to come back from that, all things considered, but it got me to thinking, who has had the better sneaker run? Like, at first glance, it's easy to say Drake is winning the battle easily because of his OBO Jordan exclusives. But when you think about the number of Pusha T collabs with Adidas combined with the lack of energy and excitement over the recent release of the Nocta Nike Hot Stepped Air Terra, I think it's a lot closer than most people imagine. But it's not just about who has better kicks. In the same Rolling Stone story, Pusha talks about an early Arby's ad campaign that has a tiny sliver of an EDM drop at the end of every TV commercial. You know the one, it comes right after the guy says, we have the meats. I played the clip, but I don't want to owe anybody royalties. No disrespect to Push. Anyways, that tiny clip is from a 2014 EDM song that features Pusha T. Push owns 40% of that song. Even though you never hear his voice in the Arby's commercial, he gets paid every time that commercial plays. Push goes on to explain that he does a lot of EDM features because they make for good commercial music. And when a song he's on gets picked up for an ad or a trailer, he gets paid regardless of whether you hear him or not. Pusha T is that Jay-Z line. He's a businessman. So when you think about all the collabs he's done with Adidas, whether it was his earlier EQT work with Originals or his crossover to basketball with Damian Lillard, I'm going to assume his cut was better than most. Drake's OBOJs might be more desirable, who knows? Maybe not to claps back with some real sneakers down the line, but again, many of those Jordans never actually released. And the only people who really care about the Terras are the resellers who were hoping to actually cash in on them. I think Push might be getting the last laugh again, y'all. Not only that, we learned an important business lesson today. Clips is wildly underrated and needs to reunite on a Coke track. Yes, I mean Coca-Cola. No malice, don't roll like that anymore. And just so nobody's confused, Nike did take care of Carolyn a few years after the brand took off on her iconic design. Don't want anybody to think Nike pulled a Mickey D's or something like that. Let's get to the heat check where we bring you everything that's dropping this week.
We have the Nike ISPA Flow 2020 SE in Dutch Green on the 29th for 200. The Sakai Nike Blazer Low Black Patent Leather on the 31st for 120. The Blazer Low White Patent Leather on the 31st for 120. We have the Union Nike Dunk Low Argon on the 31st. The Union Nike Dunk Low Court Purple on the 31st. And then we have the Women's Nike Air Max 90 Siempre Familia on the April 1st for 130. Don't forget about the Nike Air Force One Purple Skeleton on the 1st as well for 130. And then we have the Air Jordan 1 High 85 College Navy AKA basically Georgetown on April 2nd for 200. And then our April's Fool's pick of the week is the Nike Dunk Low Halloween on the 1st for 110. I guess Nike is making progress with all those shipping containers full of dunks stuck on the port of Los Angeles, huh? What I love is that Nike doesn't even bother to change the product description on the sneakers app telling us to get into spooky season now. Like now? In the middle of springtime? I wish they would have just said, hey, guess who hired new delivery drivers? And like I mentioned earlier, we are also getting the Air Force One Purple Skeleton and the Air Max 90 this week. Sneakers that were supposed to drop back in November of 2021. At least now we'll be ready for November 22, I, I, I guess. Uh, and then my actual pick of the week is the Adidas, the Kobe Sunshine on the first. Look, a quick card pass to the crazy name that Adidas has been using for the past two decades whenever they retro the late Kobe Bryant sneakers. I never liked the crazy implication, but more than that, I saw Kobe play in all-star games and win championships wearing the Kobe. In my head canon, these are not crazy ones. These are the Adidas Kobe's. Here's my hope that the Bryant estate can reach an agreement with both Adidas and Nike to license his name so we can get all of his retros with all of his logos back. I need Froby back, man. Oh, and just as I finished saying that, Vanessa Bryant announced on Instagram that the Bryant estate and Nike will resume their partnership. Well, there goes the Adidas things, unless, well, anyways. Uh, this means that there will not just be Kobe product, but Gigi product as well, and that 100% of net proceeds of Gigi shoes will go to the Mamba and Mamba Cita Sports Foundation. Here's a pro tip, Nike. Make a lot of Gigi sneakers in women's sizes, kids' sizes, men's sizes. Really, it doesn't matter. Do the right thing. Also, Nike and Vanessa will also work to establish a basketball center in the Southern California area, which again, Nike, make tons of Mamba merch because people will buy it and you will donate all that back to the Mamba and Mamba Cita Foundation. All right, and now for an actual heat check on Zach Levine being the latest NBA player to sign with New Balance, joining the likes of top 75 player of all time Kawhi Leonard, Denver Nuggets guard Jamal Murray, and NBA All-Star Jadante Murray, winner of the, wait, who award at my house when they introduced the players at this year's game? Along with the recent signing of brand ambassadors, uh, Jack Harlow, that once dormant brand is really carving out a space for themselves in the basketball space, both on and off the court. It's like the 1980s all over again and we're back on the Worthy Express. Choo, choo. By the way, New Balance. If you're looking for a retro in your archive to push when the hype for the 550s die down, the P740s that big game James wore is right there. So what can Zach Levine do for New Balance? Well. It depends. Are they going to make him a signature athlete like Kawhi, or is he going to have the same role he's had at every sneaker band he's signed with, and that's to be the face and feet of the newest non-signature performance sneaker? I'm hoping for the former, but expecting the latter. Zach never got the signature treatment over at Nike and Adidas, but he's got exclusive hyperdunks and boost you wears for days. He was also the go-to when the three stripes needed someone to wear the easy basketball, since James Harden and Damian Lillard have their own kicks that they're gonna want to sell. For his first video with New Balance, you can clearly see the shirt says that he's wearing the intelligent choice. Let's hope New Balance does right by Zach and gives him a sneaker he can call his own. Well, that and he rocks the coolest 992s before the game. Congrats on the new deal, Zach. The more players there are that spread across multiple brands, the better. All right, it's time for this week's Hard Pass. We take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go. Like dumb stunts for clout. Ah, uh, yes, we're reviving an old favorite because two particular stunts caught our eye this week. No, not that one, but that was pretty dumb too. Go do your fast and furious stunts somewhere you won't crash into other people's property with your Vin Diesel wannabe bull. I don't care if you wreck your Tesla. Don't go around wrecking your neighbor's stuff too. What would Tej and Roman think? Wait, don't answer that. Are they still stuck in outer space? <sighs> Fast 9 was dumb, man. Give Michelle Rodriguez her own spinoff already. Damn it. Anyways, this week's actual the Hard Pass belongs to a pair of videos making rounds on all of the prominent sneaker TikTok and IG accounts. First up, we've got maybe the 
cappiest, hey, my dad's mom's grandson found these shoes in the attic cap post yet. I found these shoes on a yard sale more than two years ago. What's the most expensive shoe you ever cleaned? And these are it. More than $30,000. I just saved myself 150 bucks. Stop. You lost me right away, man. Like, I understand it's an ad for a shoe cleaner. If they run the same video but leave out the, quote, I found these at a yard sale, quote, part, it would get like 5% of the views it's getting now. They know what they're doing when they add that line. And guess what? It worked. It's on hard pass. And for the second video, we've got a purported Air Force One sample of the Civilist Nike SB thermography collab going in the microwave because they don't have sunlight or, or blow dryers. We're gonna test the color changing on this. Making noise. <laughs> oh my oh, God. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my God. Wow, you're an idiot. <laughs> okay. I'm already skeptical because of the quick cuts away from the microwave and the sudden jump from 44 seconds to 29, but beyond that, it's just, why? Like, congrats, we just ruined a sample version of a sneaker that might never release. Can you imagine if this shoe makes it into a museum someday and the caption on it reads, this one of a kind shoe was in perfect condition until someone put him in a microwave for clout. Like. I'm all for the silly stunts to get a laugh, but when you see the comments and remarks are nothing but cap emojis, you know you did it wrong. So let's try a little harder next time, people. Like, show me you wore your Red October Yeezys after a night of avoiding tanks in your Tesla, like you got a six star rating in Grand Theft Auto, and when you tried to clean them, you accidentally threw them in the microwave instead of a washer. Now, if your cleaner can fix a busted, dirty, caked in Red October Yeezy, congrats. That will get a like out of me on IG. I won't buy the cleaner, no, no sir. I've got my own cleaner. See what I did there? Anyway, all right, uh, that's gonna do it for the show, guys. Thank you for watching Hard Pass. I am Jacques Slade, I'll see you next week, but not before I leave you with another listener Hard Pass. You know, the crappy part about being a sneaker collector is that you can't wear your shoes anywhere nice if you don't have a car. I gotta get on the bus with my UNC 6s, and it's not fun. Those things get dirty real easily with that white leather and that blue suede. All right, man, peace. Ah, uh, yes, the sneakerhead dilemma of actually wearing sneakers. My advice, wear them anyway and buy my sneaker cleaner to clean them. If you would like to possibly be featured in a future episode, call us at 818-493-9325. Leave a short message, your socials if you want, no more than 30 seconds, and you might be featured in a future episode. Oh, and before we go, I know the NCAA tournament is going on right now, but other than skinnier Kevin Durant and Paige, I have no idea who's good, who's winning, really anything. Sorry. I'll see you next week. Peace.